button there and then we could come and uh... okay so everybody's muted but everybody's gathered together welcome uh, to mount pleasant at home welcome to worship uh, let me uh, share my screen so that you can speak out where you are some words of affirmation um, and even though others might not be able to to hear you uh, the Lord can hear you or anybody else in your house can hear you uh, as you speak out some words that uh, will be familiar to you but uh, for me basically they just help me orientate my thoughts and my minds in a right place in a good place uh, for us to start today so welcome to Mount Pleasant at home and uh, good morning to each and <clears throat> all of you from wherever you are let us worship God together so we've got these uh, words we start with Psalm 67 verse 1 may God be merciful to us bless us and cause his face to shine on us and these words of affirmation uh, we come to God Come to God, who is your refuge and your fortress. In you, I will put my trust. Come to God, who answers when you call. In you, I will put my trust. Come to God, who is with us where you are. In you, I will put my trust. And then these declarations about our God. Our God is good. In him we will rejoice. Our God is gracious. In him we will delight. Our God is great. In him we will trust. Simple words of affirmation, but they direct us to this good and gracious and great, awesome God that we worship today. So let's make sure that everybody's muted, Karen, before we sing our first hymn of praise today. And uh, it's a great hymn. It's a classic hymn. And uh, and it's uh, I was going to try and uh, tell you who was playing it, but I can't remember. But you'll enjoy uh, the, the organ and the congregation. So join in this congregational hymn. It's the hymn Praise to the Lord, the Almighty, the King of Creation. Thanks, Karen.
Thanks, Karen. So let's pause to pray following that wonderful hymn, shall we? Praise to the Lord, the Almighty, the King of creation. Gracious God, our Heavenly Father, we, we gather in this weird uh, way yet again, and yet we're delighted to be here. We're delighted to see one another. We're delighted to be able to connect with one another, catch up with one another. And we're delighted that we're able to gather in your name and in your presence for you are with us wherever we are in each home in each sitting room and dining room and living room in each kitchen and bedroom and study and office you are with us today as we are with each other and we seek to praise and worship you with all our hearts we come to worship with all our minds we offer praise with our very being, we seek to honour you and acknowledge your greatness, your graciousness and your goodness to us. And we join in with creation, for creation itself celebrates who you are, its creator and its redeemer. So as we meet today, in the name of Jesus, may we know his presence for all our needs, whether our needs well, you know our needs, Lord. You know each of us intimately. You created us personally. You love us adoringly. Lord, meet our needs today where we are for your glory. Amen. Amen. I don't know if you can spotlight me, Karen, or is that something I need to do for myself? Uh, there, thank you. There we go. Okay, well, today is the big day, isn't it? We've been waiting 10 years for this day, haven't we? Well, okay, most of us haven't been waiting 10 years, and what's he talking about now? Well, today is Census Day, you know, that thing that only happens once every 10 years. Uh, and we've been having one in the United Kingdom since 1801, although there are some records uh, to suggest that there were some uh, way, way earlier than that. Perhaps even the Doomsday Book of 1086 was maybe the first census in, in England. Um, but uh, but most of us are on this call, I, I, I don't I don't suppose they're having one in Portugal uh, and uh, on Mallorca today. That would that would be an amazing coincidence, wouldn't it? But uh, most of us today are uh, are in that place. And you see my sense of excitement as I get an opportunity to fill in this form and interact with these questions. Well, no, not really. I'm not that excited about it, to be honest. In fact, uh, I'll be with you. I'll be honest with you. Um, I was a bit confused. We actually did it last Sunday. I know. You know, it's probably the first time in my whole life I've been a week ahead of the game on anything. Um, and that was only because I can't read a calendar. We were sitting down, we were looking at the detail, we were answering the questions, and it was only after we finished we suddenly thought, hang on a minute, that's not today's date, that's next Sunday's date. And then thankfully, oh so thankfully, I read that line at the bottom which said, you can fill it in beforehand as long as the detail doesn't change. And I thought, phew, that's a relief, you know. <laughs> so, uh, so mine I think is acceptable and legitimate. Of course, Censuses actually are, are quite biblical uh, in the sense that the Bible records a number of censuses, uh, perhaps the most famous one. We actually read about it every year, don't we? We read about it at Christmas time. We read about that census that Caesar Augustus ordered uh, so that everyone in the Roman Empire uh, would be registered. And as a result of that, in the providence of God, uh, Joseph had to go to Bethlehem, take Mary, his beloved, with him. And it's recorded uh, in Luke's Gospel, Luke chapter 2. The, 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 the Romans um, who called that census, they, they, they regularly took censuses, to be honest, uh, and all for the purposes of raising money, taxation, and establishing how many they people, people they had available uh, for their military purposes. And uh, there are other references in the New Testament to censuses, uh, not least in, in the book of Acts. Um, but if we think that's an early census, you know, around the time when Jesus was born, we're nowhere near thinking early enough. They go back way, way further than that, much, much further than that. In fact, way back in the Old Testament, there are 
uh, um, recordings of censuses being taken place. In fact, do you know what? There's a whole book in the Bible called the census book. Yeah, yeah. We don't give it that name. We call it the book of Numbers. Some of you have heard of that. But the book of Numbers in the Old Testament uh, is basically a book all about counting people, taking a census. Uh, and that was done uh, in order to ensure that the right families uh, understood where they were and how many of them there were and so on and so forth. So the book of Numbers is one whole census. So if you, if you have any interest at all in figures and people and, and, and so on and so forth, uh, have, a, have a dip into the book of Numbers. It's, it's, it's an interesting read. It's not, um, it's not the easiest book to read, but uh, it's there uh, and it's of interest. I mention all this today. Why? Well, not least to encourage you to do the census. It would be, uh, uh, I think it would be the right thing for me to do as a church leader to encourage people I know uh, to do the census and make sure that you count. But it's that line that I want to emphasize just for a moment. It's not just to make sure you count to our government, um, but it's to realize that we count, we matter. Um, not least of, call, of course to God we matter to God, we count to God. But an extension of that is not just that we count to him, but that we can count on him. We can rely on him, we can trust him. So along those two lines of um, counting and taking a census, then rejoice today in the fact that you are counted as valuable by him and that you can count on him. Let's just have another little prayer, shall we? Let's pray. Gracious God, our Heavenly Father, there are all sorts of uh, reasons why people count, count people, all sorts of reasons why censuses are taken. Not all of them great and good. Sometimes they're exercises in ego. Sometimes they are exercises in establishing military strength and power and that's certainly the case for many historical censuses but if today's census census um, which aspires at least across the united kingdom to understand uh, something of the makeup of our country and our society and something of what is needed in our country and our society uh, in the years to come lord if it prompts us to remember that we count to you and that we can count on you, then perhaps it's done a good thing for us today. So Lord, may we realise the truth of that, where we are, and take part in this census. Uh, all for your glory. Amen. Amen. Okay, so um, I have got for you today uh, another great classic hymn. That's going to be at the end. Um, and I've got a new hymn for you today, a new song, a new hymn. Um, and we're going to get to that in a moment. I'm just forewarning you. And I think it's just really lovely and just so appropriate for this time of year. And, uh, and I'm going to show that to you in a minute. And I'm going to make sure that the link is available because I've probably played it about maybe 10 times since Wednesday and Wednesday was the first time that I showed it to some people when we did our last Bible study so that's coming up in a moment uh, just before that let me tell you some basic news and details and facts uh, Tuesday's tea break that's happening this week Wednesday is not prayer and Bible study uh, this week and we're having a pause from that um, on Friday very important um, that you know this on Friday um, we have the funeral for Tony White as we celebrate his life and give thanks to God for him uh, that's taking place at the chapel at 10 a.m and, uh, and in, in the in the nicest and most respectful way uh, you're not welcome to the chapel unless you've already been invited specifically um, but you are welcome very very welcome indeed to join us live online through our youtube channel we have uh, 
I'm not going to say we've conquered the technology. I'm not going to be so bold and so foolish as to suggest that. But we have worked out the technology such that um, if you have access uh, in any way, shape or form to our YouTube channel uh, and you watch the, the videos, um, uh, then you will be able to join us from just before 10 o'clock. It's not going to be uh, live for hours before. We won't be in the building hours before but we will be there from 10 o'clock. So gear yourself up if you're able to join us five to 10 on Friday morning and be part of that service. And, uh, and it'll be lovely um, to know that, that you're there and that you can be part of that. Okay. Just one or two other things. Let me just, um, am I able to share my screen again? Uh, let me just pop this one up and uh, say last Sunday, I had a really, uh, helpful and informative uh, input from uh, Sue Thomas regarding leprosy mission, the leprosy mission, which we as a church have been uh, supporting, hey, before my time. So it's, it's a little while, um, perhaps even a long time. And uh, Sue gave a really helpful and update, uh, uh, helpful, informative update on the situation. And, uh, and we can give to that. And if you want to give to that you missed that last week and you want to give to the leprosy mission then uh, get in touch with either sue thomas or perhaps susan Steele, and uh, they'll find a way of uh, enabling to uh, enabling us to receive your your donations uh, one of the things that um, of course we, we don't do because we're not meeting and uh, i've i've hardly ever mentioned uh, when we've gathered in this way uh, are the offerings that we would normally take up as a church during our services um and, uh, and I just wanted to remind folk that there's always the opportunity to give. We just have to be more creative these days, don't we? So whether it's um, you know, standing orders, direct debits, or, or possibly even checks, you know, cash is difficult to handle at the moment. Nobody's going to banks or wants to go to banks, but, um, but you are able to give. And if you'd like to give, then uh, find a creative way of doing that and, uh, and maybe get in touch with Susan Steele, who's the church treasurer, and she'll uh, help you to, to make that happen. Okay, I just wanted to mention that. On Saturday, if you're looking for something to do on Saturday morning, and sometimes you are, um, then this is a quality event that is being put on by the Gwent Baptist Association. It's called Mission Impossible, question mark. It's not saying that mission is impossible, it's just asking the question. And it's a conference focusing on world and local mission and the main speaker is the general director of bms world mission now as you know bms world mission is something that we have supported forever in mount pleasant and uh, i'm delighted that we do and the general director dr kang san tan and his wife uh, will be speaking at that it's an online zoom event there will be the opportunity to interact with it and it starts at 9 30 on saturday morning don't worry if that's too early for you you'll be able to dip in later in the morning because it's running right through until 1 45. now i can't imagine anybody sitting from 9 30 to 1 45 nobody's expecting you to do that but um but it's an opportunity to dip into some quality teaching and we will make sure that if you receive an email about our services uh, regularly then you will receive an email about this uh, in the week so I'm flagging it up now for, for something for you to do on Saturday morning worth dipping into. OK, I really think that's probably enough uh, sharing of news and notices and so on and so forth. Uh, one can go on far too long with these sorts of things. Let me introduce you to this awesome new hymn. It's a hymn about the cross, about the cross of Christ. And uh, it comes from an organisation called City Alight. And they have produced uh, over the years a number of, of high quality songs and high quality videos that go with their songs. And, uh, and uh, you know, I don't know whether it makes any difference to you, but they're not American. OK, they're not British, but they're not American either. Uh, they're actually based in, in Australia. Um, I think it's either Sydney or Melbourne. And, uh, and they've produced this new song and it's called It Was Finished upon the cross it was finished upon the cross so even if you're not familiar with it you'll see the words coming up enjoy the words enjoy the tune thanks karen
enjoyed that folks uh, you should have seen me singing here uh, i wasn't dancing well okay i was actually but um yeah whatever you were doing to that song i hope that it lifted your spirits as it brought you closer to a, a real deep understanding of who jesus is and what he has done for us uh, through his cross and the difference that, that makes for us okay we're just gonna have a, a little short time of prayer this morning, which we'll conclude with the Lord's Prayer. We'll keep everyone muted and you can speak it out uh, where you are. But let's just spend a moment or two uh, praying for our neighbors uh, and our friends. Let's pray. God of the good news that spreads faster than fear. God of the courage that comes to our hearts. We thank you for all that Jesus did for us on the cross and that we can celebrate it. We ask that you would be with us now, be with us amidst any anxieties we have, be with us with the uncertainties that we feel, be with us when we face difficulties and challenges and obstacles. Remind us that as we gather in this way, we are for you and for one another. 
we worship you and we support one another we stand with you and we stand alongside one another and so today we stand alongside those who in our gathering and in our fellowship and in our church need your strength for whatever it is they're going through or will go through we stand alongside and pray for those who need your comfort for what they're going through and what they will go through we thank you for those and stand alongside those who need your healing for what they're going through and what they will go through and we stand alongside and appeal to you on behalf of those who need your peace a peace of heart a peace of mind a peace deep within their spirits for what they're going through and what they will go through these are prayers for ourselves and we also pray for our community and our world we pray for those who serve us those who put their lives at risk in providing services, emergency services, ambulance, fire, police, coast guard, medical and others, uphold and strengthen them today. We remember those who we should not ever take for granted, but can so easily do. Those serving us in our neighborhoods, through shops, through industries, through factories lord we honor them today we value their work bless them and protect them we remember those who who work overseas who serve overseas who are overseas uh, even on this call we pray for our friends uh, for neil in portugal for julie in mallorca for anybody else who might hear this at a later time wherever you are we pray blessing and protection on your lives so lord today as we gather hear these simple short prayers we offer them in the great name of jesus amen so let's say the lord's prayer together we don't rush it but we know how it goes it goes like this our father who is in heaven hallowed be your name your kingdom come your will be done on earth as it is in heaven give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sinned against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil for yours is the kingdom the power and the glory forever and ever amen amen Okay, so today I hope you've got a Bible with you, and I would uh, encourage you to open a Bible. This is going to be really easy to find because this is in the middle of the book, basically, the Psalms. If you can find the Psalms some somewhere in the middle, i really like it if you could follow Psalm 42 today. Um, we did a whole series of uh, uh, studies and thoughts and reflections and messages uh, based on uh, this little book in the old testament called habakkuk um but let's go to a let's go to to, to a book that's really easy to find uh, with some probably familiar words to some extent and psalm 42 is where i want us to, to linger for a little while this morning and uh and if you have that in front of you um i'm going to read it and uh then we'll go from there okay everybody with me great as the deer pants for streams of water, so my soul pants for you, my God. My soul thirsts for God, for the living God. When can I go and meet with God? My tears have been my food day and night, while people say to me all day long, where is your God? These things I remember 
as I pour out my soul, how I used to go to the house of God under the protection of the mighty one with shouts of joy and praise among the festive throng. Why, my soul, are you downcast? Why so disturbed within me? Put your hope in God, for I will yet praise him, my saviour and my God. My soul is downcast within me. Therefore I, therefore, I will remember you from the land of the Jordan, the heights of Hermon from Mount Mizar. Deep calls to deep in the roar of your waterfalls as your waves and breakers have swept over me. By day, the Lord directs his love. At night, his song is with me, a prayer to the God of my life. I say to God, my rock, why have you forgotten me? Why must I go about mourning, oppressed by my enemy? My bones suffer mortal agony as my foes taunt me, saying to me all day, where is your God? Why, my soul, are you downcast? Why so disturbed within me? Put your hope in God, for I will yet praise him, my saviour and my God. Some of you will know a songwriter and hymn writer called Graham Kendrick. Now, Graham Kendrick has been writing Christian songs and hymns, and we sing many of his um, uh, in church. And um, well, Graham is also a thinker and a writer. And we're going to hear just a minute. Well, I think it's two minutes, actually. We're going to hear two minutes from Graham as he reflects on this psalm briefly before we do some digging into it. Let's hear what Graham Kendrick has to share about this. Thanks, Karen. Now, it's natural to long for what we've lost. The writer of Psalm 42 was in exile somewhere far away from home, mourning the life that he once knew. He remembers wistfully the sights and sounds of the great worship gatherings, the great feasts, and aches to be back there. Now, for many of us, the present restrictions feel like an exile, and exiles long to go home. Many of us really miss worshipping how we used to, being energised and inspired by our gatherings, our conferences, our festivals. It's good to remember. But he remembers something else. What made those gatherings so special? It was God's presence. I mean, imagine them with everything but God's presence. And cannot the Lord of all the earth also be present in a place of exile? So repeatedly, he takes a grip on his mood and readjusts his focus. Why, my soul, are you downcast? Why so disturbed within me? Put your hope in God. I will yet praise him, my saviour and my God. He resolves to place his hope not in reconstructing the past, but in the person and presence of the living God, in the here and now, even if it does feel like a far country. Let's drill down a little bit into this psalm in the light of that, what I think is a really helpful uh, introduction as Graham paints the picture on, uh, on this psalm, Psalm 42. Around this time last year, my mum celebrated her birthday with the announcement of our first lockdown. Now there's a birthday present for you. Happy birthday, mum. 
well, it was slightly earlier this week. Indeed, some of you have had birthdays this week, haven't you? Happy birthday to those of you who celebrated your birthdays this week. Each birthday is unique, as is each day. There was uh, Kath Carpenter, happy birthday, Kath. Uh, Fred Jinks, happy birthday, Fred. Uh, Trisha Walters, happy birthday, uh, Trisha. Some of you had lots of cards and some had a few and some had multiple cakes, apparently, Kath Carpenter. So I'll be around later, is that all right? <laughs> okay. You've had a birthday and not for the first time during lockdown. It's weird, isn't it, having a birthday in lockdown? Lots of people have been reflecting this last week or so on this time last year, what we were doing this time last year, what we were thinking, what we were beginning to enter into this time last year. Lockdown, well, it was unimaginable until it was forced on us. When we supposed as we struggled through Easter and Pentecost last year, we imagined that it, it wouldn't last much longer. But here we are again, and with horrible statistics of suffering and loss, multiple sorrows and frustrations over the last 12 months of bereavement and prolonged sickness and sort of a, a nagging anxiety or fear. Here we are again. Here we are once again looking for hope amidst the brokenness. And turning once again to Jesus, whose death on the cross is not least about the outflowing, generous love of God. In fact, it is a lot more than that. It's like a great deep river into which many tributaries of history have flowed and from which many streams of life-giving nourishment flow out from. That's the cross, and we'll come to it in a moment. Last week, I mentioned that there comes a time when you need a psalm. Well, today is one of those times, I think, and we have this psalm, Psalm 42, in front of us. We're well on our way to Easter, aren't we? It's only two weeks away, and there is much to ponder. And I hope you're joining me for our daily readings and accompanying reflection or prayer it's only about five six maybe seven minutes each day and we're covering a wide range of bible verses and gospel truths bits from the old testament and the new testament the gospels and the letters and picking up gems from each day from the jewelry tray if you like next sunday palm sunday bring your palms to wave well, that's what I might be tempted to say if I was in church. And hey, I'm also tempted to say it today. We can see each other. Bring a palm next Sunday and wave it. It'll put a smile on somebody else's face, that's for sure. We are here once again, aren't we? Once again, reflecting on Jesus, his life, his death and his resurrection as we head towards Easter. And specifically next week as we contemplate Jesus is great yet humble entry into Jerusalem, which perhaps gives us longings for our own entry or re-entry into a place, into a, into a building, into a church. We're longing, aren't we, to return to places that we know and love, returning to familiar places that mean so much to us, returning to places of significance. When you look at a picture, a scene, a number of features jump out at you at first glance. But it's only as you linger that you begin to see more and more. As we take a walk or a wander from the house here, daily getting some fresh air and some exercise, we can look across the, the golf course or the canal or the fields see a small farm in a distance, a horse on the brow of the field, a squirrel scurrying up the tree trunk, a thrush singing in the, the high branches, a woodmouse poking out 
its nose from the safety of its little burrow into a big wide world. When you first hear a piece of music, perhaps like the, the new song and hymn from today, a number of rhythms and riffs reach your mind through your ears. But it's only as you listen again that you pick up all the words and hear all the instruments. Was that a bassoon in the background? A violin in the verse? A clarinet in the chorus? When you read a psalm, a number of features jump out at first reading. At first reading today of Psalm 42, what did you see? Did you see two voices, one of fear and one of faith? Did you spot the two places, Jerusalem and then the far off Mount Hermon? Did you spot the two groups, God's people and God's enemies? Did you spot the two different effects of water? Verse one talks about ref the water of refreshment. As the deer pants for streams of water, so my soul pants for you, my God. And yet further on in the psalm, uh, in verses, verse three, there's a sense in which the water of tears is present. And then in verse uh, seven, the waters of destruction, as deep calls to deep in the roar of the waterfalls and all your waves and breakers have swept over me, two different effects of water. But perhaps the most obvious feature of this psalm is the repeated refrain in verses five and 11, in which the believer, speaker, speaks to himself, herself, themself. Verse five and verse 11. Why, my soul, are you downcast and why so disturbed within me? On the one hand is the voice of experience, the experience of somebody who's going through low spirits, downcast. Their spirits are low, they're experiencing a measure of inner turmoil, disturbed. On the other hand, this believer can speak to themselves with the voice of faith to exhort herself or himself and set her hope or his hope in God the Saviour. The same voice of faith is heard in verse 8, affirming the song of the steadfast covenant love of God. The song that faith sings, we might say, if you have, if I have recollection of some of the things I was saying last week from Habakkuk chapter 3. This inner discussion gives us a window into the interior struggles of the life of faith. For this person in this psalm is experiencing something that some of us know. There is a measure of social isolation, perhaps in verses one and two, longing to be somewhere else. There's the there's a spirit there's the spiritual isolation, the social isolation of verse three, wanting to go to be with God. The physical isolation, perhaps, of verse four. These things I remember as I pour out my soul, how I used to go to the house of God under the protection of the mighty one. Some of us have experienced and are experiencing spiritual isolation, social isolation, physical isolation. And, and some of the consequences of that, well, again, they come out in this psalm. There is crying uh, perhaps in verse three, the crying of tears. There's the fatigue of verses five and 11. There's the, the emotional disturbance. There's the, the feeling of being overwhelmed in verse seven by the, the breakers and the feeling of rejection in verse nine. I say to God, my rock, why have you forgotten me? Why must I go about mourning oppressed by my enemies? The struggles for the believer are real here. And they're caused by two things, I think. There's a tension between two places and a tension between two peoples or two groups. 
very briefly. The tension between two places. This writer is far away from the house of God in Jerusalem, where the festive throng of God's people would gather. That's what verse four says. He is far away. Where is he? Well, he's by the headwaters of the River Jordan in the Hermon mountain range, verse six. That's where he is, a long way from where he wants to be, a long way from Jerusalem. And he belongs to turn, to return to the holy mountain of God. If you fast forward to Psalm 43, verse four, it talks about that longing to return to your holy mountain, the place of God's anointed king and anointed presence. Come on, folks, we long to be in different places sometimes, don't we? We long to be able to visit family who are far, far away. We long to, to go away on a holiday and have a break. We long for these things. There's a tension between two places. And there's a tension in this psalm between two peoples, two, two groups. This psalmist is surrounded by people who are mocking him. Verse three, people who are saying, where is your God? We know people, don't we, who either publicly or perhaps more often privately mock us, who don't share our longings or understand our heartache uh, of not being able to go and worship uh, with others, uh, to worship alongside others, to sing alongside others in a place, in a building with fellow believers. There are people that don't understand that. This is one of the, the struggles that we have, the social struggle. There's the experiential struggle, perhaps of the pain and suffering, uh, pain in our bones. Some of us feel that simply through uh, the aging process. Verse 10 talks about uh, this psalmist's bones suffering mortal agony, the ache within him. And then there's the, the judicial pain and trouble that this psalmist is experiencing. You don't really see that until you get to psalm 43 verse 1 where he cries to god vindicate me my god and plead my cause against an unfaithful nation there is still a need for vindication for judicial processes to come to fulfillment in our day because because all lives matter so black lives matter we can say that because not all men attack women, we still need to acknowledge that too many do. And because historical images inform us, we do also need to realise that they are not all to be celebrated. There is justice needed in our world at so many levels for so many different individuals or groups of people. And what would be our response to this, this social challenge, this experiential challenge, this judicial challenge? Well, there's a sense in which psalmist, this psalmist has, a, has an interesting response. He speaks to himself. Verse 5 and verse 11, he addresses himself. It's a slightly odd notion, I, I think, to be honest, in a way, that's notion of arguing uh, with oneself, Yes, I do do it myself, and I'm guessing that some of you do it too, but that doesn't take away the fact that there's a sense in which it is a little bit odd, because it perhaps implies that we are created and designed to be people who are divided within ourselves, that, we're, that we are not simply to, to perhaps give in to our, our sadness, even when it seems right to do so, but rather that we are to battle within ourselves. And yet, I don't think that's the essence of what this psalmist is experiencing, because you need to understand the wider picture, where I think it makes some more sense. Let's remember that this psalmist here is longing to be with God's people in the temple in Jerusalem where, for them, they would have likely received the encouragement 
of fellow believers, of friends, and the exhortations of a temple priest, someone who was able to minister God's word to them and encourage them. And it's precisely because they are cut off from all that, that they're left really to try and address their issues themselves and encourage themselves. You might think we're in a similar situation. We're not really. The fact that you are here today in this way means that we're not in the same situation as this psalmist, completely cut off from fellowship and friendship for the encouragements of the, that those bring or for the exhortations that we can have from reading God's word ourselves where we are or hearing others read it uh, as I've done so this morning. And yet, and so we can rejoice that we're not thankfully not cut off from all the sources that can bring us comfort and strength and exhortation. And yet, I want today to celebrate the fact that we're not cut off in another more profound way. We are not cut off from our God. And we can be doubly thankful, not just for the technology that enables us to meet in this way, but for the fact that we are not cut off from our God because of all that Jesus has done for us. We know one who battles for us and fights for us, and we're not left to battle ourselves and fight for ourselves. He is the friend who encourages. He is the priest who exhorts. He is the one who knows our social and experiential and judicial struggles. Indeed, he faced all these himself. He encountered skeptical people. He experienced pain and suffering himself. Jesus knew all these things. And what is true of him is also true of his followers. Those who have given their allegiance to him, entrusted themselves to him, are in a relationship with him, are connected to him, are united to him, are in him, experience something of what he experienced. So today, on the basis of this psalm, I want us to rejoice. Rejoice that although there is death in our world, there is also resurrection. Although there is loss, there is also gain. Although there is pain, there is also glory. And it's actually on the cross where we see all these great things. Some of us have spent, well, several weeks, at least 10 weeks, working our way through Colossians. And amongst that, we came across a verse in Colossians, chapter 2, verse 15. And if you're really quick, you can turn to that. And it says in Colossians chapter 2, verse 15, he, that is Jesus, disarmed the principalities and powers and made a public example of them, triumphing over them on the cross. Christ has triumphed and we have triumphed with him. Others may point to us and our failings and our faults and our sins. And it might make us feel guilty. They might demand justice because of the, the foolish and false and sinful things that we've done. But we can know that our sin has been dealt with and that it's not unredeemable. We are not going to be condemned eternally. It looks as if the powers of the world triumph over Jesus on the cross, but actually it's the other way round. That's why the same Apostle Paul who wrote the, those words, that Jesus made a public example of them, triumphing over them on the cross, also says in other parts of the New Testament, 1 Corinthians chapter 2, for example, that the rulers of this age didn't understand what was going on, because if they had, they wouldn't have crucified the Lord of glory. And one of the books that we've been dipping into in our Lent series of daily Bible readings and reflections and prayers is the book of Hebrews. And the book of Hebrews is equally emphatic and seems to think it's so obvious that it almost doesn't need explaining that Jesus shared his flesh and blood so that, as it says in Hebrews chapter 2 verse 4, through death he might destroy the one who has the power of death, that is the devil, and set free 
the people who all their lives uh, were under the power of slavery because of the fear of death. In other words, Christ has conquered even that which we most fear. They all declare, all the writers in the New Testament of the Gospels and the letters and the book of Hebrews and even the last book in Revelation, they all declare that Jesus, who wore the crown of thorns on the cross, has won the victory over the, the violent games of thrones that get played out in our world. And our story is the story of the God who doesn't stay away from our pain and sorrow, but in fact, through all eternity, longed to be with us and live with us. And of course, Jesus, the, the human face of God, the living presence of the loving God, came to this place, this world, and encountered and experienced the pain and sorrow uh, and the justice that we, we're denied and the power that's corrupted and the truth that's often sneered at and the love that's often trampled on, he experienced all that. And dying on the cross, the victim of twisted justice, of corrupt power, of failed love, he invites us to respond to his love by loving him. You may feel, and we're almost finished, you may feel, that a dark cloud sits over you at the moment. You may think that this feels like a dark time for those you know, for the circumstances that we're in, for the happenings across the world. Our world is presently reeling from so many broken dreams, from the schooling prospects of our children and the mental health prospects of our young people, the unemployment prospects of our young adults and the in lack of uh, the lack of employment prospects of our young adults and the unemployment experiences of many mature adults. And we can think too of the exhausted and crushed healthcare workers struggling to cope, or the scientific leaders and laboratory technicians who are straining to find the most effective and efficient ways forward. And then there's the po political instability and its violent edge that's becoming, becoming worryingly real in too many places such as Hong Kong, Myanmar, Ethiopia, and some in some pockets of our country too. Jesus' death occurred at a time in a world amidst the people who were similarly straining amidst the broken dreams and false dawns of their day. Yet Jesus overwhelmingly uh, uh, overcame all such things by being lifted up on a cross. That is his moment of victory when the victory was won over all that bruises and breaks us, all that defeats and diminishes us, all that curtails and crushes us, and all that leads to despair and death, for Christ triumphed over them on the cross. And so once again, today, we can declare, because of Christ, that even though I walk through the darkest valley, I will fear no evil, for you are with me your rod and your staff, they comfort me. Let's pray. Through the cross of Christ our Saviour, all will be well. Lord Jesus, even our brief reflections of your experience of the cross does no justice to all that you achieved for us. Help us as we continue to ponder the wonder of your work for us in the days that lead up to our Easter celebration. Help us to marvel in wonder and worship for all that you have done for us. And equip us for all that we have to do this day and in the days ahead. Equip us by your abiding presence and your enabling strength. Lord, be blessed in what we do, for we are blessed by what you have done. May all the praise and glory go to you this day. Amen. 
So let's sing a hymn, shall we? We've got a great hymn. It's one that you know, one that you love, and it is the hymn, What a Friend We Have in Jesus. Thanks, Karen. So I'm just wondering if we can maybe unmute everybody just to share the grace together this morning. If you'd like to speak out uh, these words that we call the grace, uh, don't worry if you don't know them, uh, receive them uh, as a blessing today. And then after that, as if somebody's dog is on the throne, maybe they can hear the grace to smile on our face. <laughs> We say the grace together. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the Holy Spirit be with us all. Amen. Amen. Be with us all evermore. Amen. A crazy cacophony of shared love. Why don't we say that? There we go. Anyway, folks, lovely to see you this morning. Hope you're well. Hope you have a good week. Hope some of you will hang around for breakout groups and catch up with one another. Um, and uh, if not, then, um, well, stay safe, take care, and uh, look forward to seeing you again uh, soon. Um, we'll go to breakout groups in a minute or two. No, I want to join in. Whoever was blaming my dog, it wasn't my dog that was barking. No, it was ours. <laughs> it was Wilson. <laughs> it, was, it was Wilson, was it? Yeah, Wilson, Wilson. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> oh, Holly, you're getting the brain. <laughs> if, we counted, if we counted the number of dogs who also joined us. <laughs> and cats. Cats. Oh, and cats. The cats. Another 10 people, wouldn't it? <laughs> Liam Mallorca and Sean and Mike. It's one way of growing your conversation, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Do you want to see us there? We'll go to breakout mm -hmm. groups now. And if you're not joining us for groups, then uh, take care, folks. Bye. Bye now. Bye now. Bye. Bye. Thank you, Mark.
Number two. 